I'm Bill Curran, Penn State University Emeritus Professor of Wheat Science. Being able to raise multiple crops, including cover crops, on the farm can offer many benefits toward improving wheat suppression, improving soil health and nutrient cycling, and increasing profitability. However, in many regions of the Western U.S., increasing the diversity of a crop rotation or cropping system can be challenging because of lower rainfall and limited water resources. And also a shorter growing season, particularly as we move from north through the central and western U.S. We're going to visit with two Montana State University agronomists, Dr. Perry Miller at MSU Bozeman and Dr. Kent McVeigh from the Southern Ag Research Center near Billings. They're going to share their experiences and perspectives of integrating cover crops into a traditional wheat fallow system that has been commonplace in the northern Great Plains region of central and eastern Montana. Um, one thing we want to talk about are, are cover crops as you move east in the U.S. and Canada. Um, you know, cover crop adoption is, is much more widespread. But here in Montana and really the West, uh, it seems to be quite challenging. The challenge for us uh, in this semi-arid environment is we're always kind of guarding our water, saving our water for the next crop. And so to, to where, where do we grow that cover crop? You know, within the crop cycle. So you could, you know, in some places out in the Midwest or the Eastern U.S., you can actually grow up before you grow your main corn or soy, right? That's not really an option. So then the, the only window that becomes sensible is replacing that summer fallow to some extent. Oh. You're greening up that fallow period. We were, we just completed an eight-year study where we looked at... Um, growing cover crops for about 60 days so we would plant with the, our with a lot of thought went into what species what timing all that you know all that sort of thing and after visiting with farmers it seemed like the sensible time to plant it was after they were done their normal spring cash crops so that took us to the first week of may uh, and then we would terminate them uh, first week of july i think we averaged averaged across study sites up there 12 bushel per acre, 12 to 15 bushel per acre yield loss. And we're not a high yield, you know, right. 20, so 30, 25, 30 yeah. bushel wheat crops, <laughs> pretty good crop. So, uh, or, you know, good, especially for spring wheat. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it just economically really, really prohibitively expensive. And then you, you're paying money to do these things and it's putting you in a hole for soil water and costing you yield in the following. I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense, except, um, there's a strong need for forage, alternative forage use periods. And so, you know, what, where are we, you know, what's an annual forage versus what's a cover crop? That gets to be an interesting discussion sometimes. But yeah. in, in, in my mind, it's a matter of intent. And so if if you had intended, you know, if your normal practice would have been to have it summer fallow and instead you put some cover there and you used it for forage, that's still, you know, from a soil perspective. So if you have but, livestock, cattle, probably mostly, uh and you can grow something to feed the, the, the animals, and it also is a cover crop, there can be a, 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 a silver lining. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And so especially, I mean, we just come through three years of drought, and when forages were like really expensive, and so uh, you know, all of a sudden cover crops looked a little bit better yeah, if you yeah. had some, you know, a place you could put some animals out for, for uh, at least a month or, or, right. or so in the summer. So, yeah. so that's the one angle I'd say. So if you surveyed... Um, cover crop acres in Montana, they would overlap almost completely with forage use of some sort. And it, and it can work. And, it, and Darren Boss and his group up at Haver have done some work to show that these cover crops can be pretty profitable as a, as a, as a grazing alternative. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Kent Mavay. Yeah, I'm, I'm the Extension Cropping System Specialist here at uh, Montana State University. This is our attempt to try and diversify winter wheat production. That's probably the main dry land production is winter wheat and fallow. So if you can add a cover crops into the system, maybe you can get a little bit of diversity, a little bit of control for weeds. Maybe you can control them using cover crops. Maybe you can change uh, soil quality parameters of, of, of the soil and improve soil quality. So that's probably the bottom line when it comes down to uh, the potential of, of cover crops for um, it's water. It's all about water for us, right? So, if you're if you're using water to grow a cover crop, you're stealing water that you could be storing for that wheat crop, and 
In dry years or normal, probably in dry years, we maybe get 50% of the yield compared to the fallow. So the cover crop robs 50% of wheat yield? Of wheat yield, yeah. Mm -hmm. In a normal year to a wet year, it might only rob 20 to 30% of the yield. The one cover crop that does the least amount of water uh, reduction is peas. And so we have a pea strip right here next to us. Peas mature a little earlier. They're, they're turned. This has still got some green in it. Actually, just sprayed this earlier this week to kill it. So everything has been sprayed with uh, Roundup. It's just now starting to turn. But the wheat, the peas die off a little earlier. So if we get any late season rains, or late summer rains, I think that goes back into and we see uh, maybe a 10% uh, reduction in wheat yield following peas. In a dry year, it still can be 40-50%, but it, peas give you a little bit of nitrogen advantage, I know, from the, from the fixation, and they just don't use as much water, especially deep water. They don't really root down more than two, two to three feet. So you, you had mentioned that uh, in this area, it's 12 to 13 inches of precip, annual precip, um, and, that, and then as you go north and east, it's less than that. Um, and so the challenge of trying to integrate cover crops uh, in these wheat fallow systems, uh, particularly if you're if you're potentially looking at a, as much as a 50% reduction in wheat yield, that that seems like quite a challenge. Well, without having any other measurable benefit, if if we measure soil quality changes that really improve, then maybe the maybe the equation changes and maybe it's really worthwhile. Or you're getting some weed control. Or you're getting some weed control, and you mentioned that too. Just standing here, we don't see near as much kochia in in where the cover crops are as to where my fallow strip has not been sprayed and kept clean this uh, this uh, this year. And so there's a lot of pressure there where we, we've not done any spraying where there's a cover crop growing, right? Only in those fallow strips does it get sprayed through, I, I guess we spray it right ahead of planting, but after that it's, it, it's on its own. It's just the, it's the pressure of a growing crop that keeps those, those weed, that weed pressure down. So how do you talk about this, uh, you know, with some of the, I guess, some of the negativeness of, of wheat yield it's with farmers and, and... So I typically talk in the yield data from the weed, I typically look at the relative yield compared to fallow. If you're in a wheat fallow system, you're growing wheat every other year. And, and, and so no income in that fallow year. So yeah, so you're, get, you're getting 50% <laughs> yeah, right. I per guess that's year, right? right? Yeah. So if you're growing in the, in the system here and you're getting 90% of that wheat yield uh, following peas, so it's a 10% reduction, but it's still more wheat than you would have been growing if you were in a wheat fallow system. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, well thank you. I hope yeah. you've enjoyed our short presentation. As you've heard, integrating cover crops into a traditional wheat fallow system here in Montana can be challenging. Certainly bright spots exist and include the increase in pulse crop acres like field pea that have occurred over the last 10 years with potential as both grain and cover. It can also be profitable when cover crops are grazed, adding additional forage to the livestock operation. The scientists at Montana State University will continue to research the potential of diversifying crop rotations, so stay tuned to their progress.